neoliberal Gnostics versus the Gnostic traditionalists. Hey everybody, this is Mo, the Gnostic warrior, coming to you live from Fallbrook in San Diego, California. Thank you for tuning in to another walk and talk. And in this philosophical discussion, I wanted to talk to you about seeing our society corrupting our nation's youth. And we're at a precipice in society, in, in, in our world. And, you know, the cancel culture, the different things that we're seeing, these ideas that don't have any scientific basis are basically starting to take over and I believe we're at a time where it's a war of ideas. Again, thank you for tuning in. Hey, hit that like button. I appreciate you guys. My name is Mo, the Gnostic Warrior. And it's important we, we talk about these ideas because it's getting pretty dangerous out there. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people basically draw a line in the sand as far as what side of the, the street that they're on or the road. And these all deal with philosophies and ideas. A lot of people don't understand is that a lot of these ideas and these philosophies is how we are attracted to one another. It's how sometimes we get, you know, we buy books on ideas that we're interested in. You know, and I feel that we live in a Gnostic world where we get to choose basically our own paths. You know, you could choose whatever mask or persona you would like to put on. You could choose whatever profession you would like to do. You could choose whatever religion you would like to follow. And if you really look at the core basis of all this, whether it's a religion, whether it's a political organization, whether it's a brotherhood or a secret society, most of this stuff deals with ideas and people congregate around these ideas and these beliefs, whether again, it's religion or say the Freemasons or what may have you. Um, you could even say that about atheism, people that aren't into religion, right? So the atheists have a tendency not to hang around the theists, the, the religionists, the people that follow religion. And keep in mind that a Gnostic actually believes in spirituality and in God. They're not agnostic. Atheists are agnostic. So they would be people who don't believe in God. So that's why, of course, you know, they would consume each other's podcasts. They would follow each other on Twitter. They would basically hang out around these ideas. And so that's what I wanted to kind of start this walk and talk is help you understand the basis of why we're attracted to different people or different groups. They're all about ideas, words, philosophies. And again, I, I feel at this time in history, you know, the one we're living in right now is we're at a war of these ideas. One I would like to call the neoliberal Gnostics, and you could put a, a whole faction of people inside that. These are people who might be called the lovers of modernity. They like to change pronouns and nouns to fit whatever reality, virtual reality they want to live. They want to change who we are biologically. 
and change the way we talk in the universities. You know, that's uh, the main reason, if you guys have heard of Jordan Peterson, he's a famous philosopher now, he's a millionaire, multi-millionaire, traveled the world. You know, a lot of people love him, a lot of people hate him. But in any event, he stood up against these neoliberal ideas. He was a professor, I believe, at Toronto University. And some literature came out where he was basically told that he would have to go along with changing the way he talked, with changing the way he viewed reality as far as truth. He would have to now be forced by the school to talk and accept this neoliberalism. And he said, no, I'm standing up. I'm not going to call people, you know, if they want to be called a teddy bear or they want to be called this or that, he was going to call people what they biologically were. He was going to follow traditional science, tradition, and stand up against these neoliberalist ideas that wanted to force him to talk a certain way, to follow certain ideas. This is what a lot of people don't understand when, you know, they see me posting political stuff, you know, talking about possibly like, you know, the, the Biden health Secretary of Health, transgender, a male that goes around as a female that advocates for giving hormones to children as young as three years old, who advocates giving hormones to children without parental consent. You know, so basically, you know, if wherever you're listening in the world, if you have a child that goes to school they could be, I think as young as 10, I think they were talking about allowing that child at 10 to choose if they want to use these hormones without you, the parent, having any say-so. These are these ideas. This is the science that this Biden nominee is choosing and is, is pushing. To us, the, the, the plebs, the citizens of the, the satanic states of America, right? If we get this type of shit, this, I'm sorry for my, my language. You know, I know some people out there have your, your kids with you. And I know I also have my kids with me and doing a podcast and you're listening to Mo and all of a sudden I say curse words. So I apologize to some of you out there with your kids, but it gets me a little fired up sometimes when I, I talk about this stuff. Again, thank you, hey, for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. I'm taking a walk on this Saturday here in Fallbrook. It's a beautiful blue day, no chemtrails, so it's nice. And um, I wanted to flesh these ideas out with you, the Gnostic Warrior community. Not to control you with my ideas, but to share them and maybe help you kind of make sense of everything because I believe we were managed by chaos and sometimes it's hard for even people that mean well to make sense of the political arena or what I'm talking about neoliberalism versus traditional ism so in case you guys haven't figured out I'm, I'm a traditionalist I'm for truth I'm for real science and for people that are wise to rule and to base this on traditional values. So what are traditional values, right? Sorry guys, I'm just going by some people here in a car, but I'll get to quiet. They're doing a little garage sale. So, if you look back at history and you study, you know, where we come from, you'll find that 
a lot of these values are based on the tradi tr Christian traditions. And again, I know we have multi-varied cultures, but I'm talking about mainly here in the West. If you look at our universities, most of them were, were built by Catholic Jesuit priests and so forth. I'm not going to get into that arena right now. We all know what's happening in the the church and of course with some of these pedophile priests, but that's a podcast and a walk and a talk in itself and a series and so what do you do? What do you do when you see these people that are pushing these ideas that potentially are harmful to you, to your children? For example, I think this is a a great point, you know, dealing with this health secretary pushing these hormones to young children and allowing and advocating for children to do it without parental consent. So the video I had posted on Facebook, I was talking about, you know, hey, this is, you know, Rand Paul had confronted this man who is a woman, a transgender woman, whatever you want to call it and basically said, you know, hey, you're advocating for this. You know, there's no science. There's no, you know, basically history showing that this is safe. In fact, there's a lot of data proving that it's the opposite, that it has the potential to, to damage children forever and permanently scar them. And a lot of this is irreversible. So once a person starts using, you know, these hormones, these genetic reversing, altering drugs, they're pretty much done. You know, their, their bodies, their alchemical become chaos. And there's people that have gone through this type of treatments that regret it a lot. You know, and of course, this isn't the information you hear of. This isn't the data, but more and more children are now being turned on to these ideas, to this information via the internet. We could be, you know, teaching them values of, of morals and so forth. I'm a liberal, guys, but I'm based on traditional liberty and liberalism, not the modern version that we're seeing now on the leftist extreme side of the fence. Okay, so I don't even like to call myself left or right. You know, I don't like to be put in a, a little fucking box by, excuse me, there's my language again. Sorry. Um, another box by people. So I believe that people should have liberty to you know, be who they are, what they want to, as long as it doesn't hurt other people. I believe you should say also what you would like to say with freedom, without being hurt or persecuted, as long as these ideas are not hurtful or possibly terroristic or abusive or could lead to any type of people getting hurt. And actually what I'm seeing is this very thing with these ideas, these extremist leftist ideas, these neoliberal Gnostics who basically believe just, you could do whatever you want. You could say whatever you want. You could influence our children however you want. Just let them be. They feel that we should all be free to do whatever we want. And they should be free from the pedophiles to the transgenders or whoever to influence our children in whatever they want or whatever fashion they want through the internet, through the media. And people like us would be their enemy or a danger who they seek to destroy. Meaning their parents people who actually want to look out 
for children and other people in society that believe in traditional values and philosophy and wisdom. They believe in traditional science. So this is the war that we're seeing now that they're characterizing the left versus the right. And I do believe that it's going to get even more militaristic and authoritarian, more unrest is going to happen in the years to follow. As I said, I did a video, the real estate market here in the United States is going to crash this year. I predict it will start in 2022. It will really hit. Mark my words in this video. If you know, they're doing the moratoriums right now. It's just a matter of time before that happens. But I believe that's when a lot of the unrest will, will start. But in regards to this, this, these ideas, I believe now is the time that we need to stand up and we need to make a choice what side of the road we're on. And again, I'm not saying you side with the Christians if you're on the, this side, the conservatives. It's it's almost as if you could put people in a bucket and it doesn't matter your religion or so forth, you know. I believe in science and biological reality. I believe that we should go by the knowledge and the traditions of our, our ancestors that have helped build this world we shouldn't tear everything down. I'm not a big believer in vaccines and all these hormone changing drugs that there's no little science in history. And much of the science that we have is proving that it's dangerous to us. You know, it's as if all these ideas that are being promoted are actually leading us to death and illness. Look at the health secretary. I mean, it, it scares me when I, I see someone that's a health professional that doesn't look healthy, right? I mean, look all across the world, guys and girls, men and women, friends, Gnostics. Look at your health secretaries, whatever respective nation you're in. I mean, I think the UK, she's like 200 and something pounds. You see the one here, the transgender lady, she's definitely obese or man, whatever. <laughs> and I'm just like going, man, we're living in really hunger game times, but in reality, this is what we're living. So again, hey, thank you for tuning in guys. This is Mo, the Gnostic warrior on this walk and talk. Just wanted to talk about neoliberalism, neoliberalist ideas, and also traditional ideas and philosophy. Hey, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you guys hitting that like button. So the traditional ideas go back to Greece, you know, to the time of Plato and Plutarch, the time of the Gnostics, Pythagoras, right? So all these names that I'm saying right now of these philosophers are are the philosophers that gave us these ideas that built our world that we see now. Okay? And a lot of these ideas are basically, they're, they're passed off from one philosopher to another who might, you know, expand on those ideas, but they always honor those ideas. They honor those philosophers. They honor the truth. And they stay in line with those traditions. Okay, so, hey, thank you again for tuning in. So, if we look at traditionalism, we look at traditional philosophy, okay? We look at traditional religion, if you're, you're into that, or, or Gnosticism, you know? And, and then the Gnosticism, you know, you don't stay in the past primarily talking about what the Gnostics did 2,000 years ago, every day, all day. You try to apply it to you know, modern life. You try to apply these teachings, this, this Gnosticism to your modern reality by honoring them, but also trying to help understand them. 
So these are traditions. These are philosophies and ideas that have basically been passed down through time from the East, primarily from Egypt to, to Greece. And then we also have, of course, the religions that have came from the East to the West. And in the West, we got, you know, Roman Catholicism, which led to all the different religions now. And I contend Christianity is a Gnostic religion and Jesus was a Gnostic and the apostles and so forth. And I could talk about that in a, another podcast and really get in depth with that. Sorry for the, the noise here. I got a, a new mic, so hopefully it's a little better. Um, let's see if you guys have any questions or I could say hello. So Cole was asking about the Democrats. Correct me if I'm wrong. They're basically the communists. That's why I am anarchy, anti-political in any way. You know, Cole, uh, the proper word of the anarchist is against their rule. You know, so you could uh, apply that term. It doesn't mean against all rulers or, or everything that we have set up. Because, you know, some people have the idea that, you know, anarchy is just nothing, no government, no, no ruling force. It's just complete chaos, which of course would not be good and you would not like that very long i'm telling you anybody wouldn't um, but it's against certain rulers so you know the anarchist rebels against certain rulers that seek to possibly enslave or give vaccines to their children right he he, he rebels he's anti he's an anarchist against these rulers these archons that seek to do some of these things through these ideas. And I mean, this could be either Democrat or Republican, you know, it really, it doesn't matter. Um, it really matters the person's ideas, the person's background, who they are. It's not what people say or what dream they have or whatever they want to do. And then we're seeing a lot of stuff, of course, in the media and all these conspiracy theories getting touted out there by QAnon or QAnon, whatever it might be, and the CIA and the FBI. And, you know, so you have all this chaos game going on, which confuses people as well. But, you know, as far as the United States of America, guys, we live in a kind of a communist, socialist, fascist type of state already. We've been living in that for a long time. So, if you really look at it, I mean, so many people get government assistance. That's a form of socialism. You know, I have to pay a lot of taxes every year, especially here in California. A lot of people are on welfare, right? We don't have a choice. We have to pay these state taxes and we have these federal taxes. And of course, those taxes go to other things, but you know, that's basically what takes care of a lot of the people that aren't working, that don't have food. And there's millions of people in the United States that are in that position. So you'll find even when you're homeless here. So for example, you're homeless in the United States, say in California, you're still going to make a check of $500 and have food or whatever it might be. I'm not sure exactly the amount, okay? So think about that, Cole. Think about that, everybody that, you know, wants to try to understand what type of rule we live, live under or type of government. Is it a democracy? Is this communism? Is this fascism? You know, so the fascist side, let's, let's talk about that, about businesses ruling over us, consolidating, right? small businesses and slamming them down. For example, during this COVID, you know, Amazon, Bezos, we have Facebook, we have Twitter. These are private companies, guys, ruling over us, ruling our minds, ruling our, our shopping. And they're making it so, and that's considerably ruling through, through business. And I don't know, I'm not saying there's a conspiracy behind that, but that's a, 
a form of fascism, right? And communism is kind of where we all kind of pitch in. You know, we don't really live in a, I would say, a communist country. We live in a capitalist slash socialist slash fascist country, I would say. So communism would be more, you know, there's different forms and different ideas of communism. But if you look back to like, say, the old secret societies, like the, the Brotherhood of the Pythagoreans, you know, there was a, a communism that they had, a commune, where they were all brothers and they shared, you know, once you were in that brotherhood with, you shared whatever with your brothers, your family, whatever was yours was theirs and whatever was theirs was yours, you know, or if you traveled from, say, Greece to Italy and there was a Pythagorean brother, he would take you in, you know, so... That would be kind of a, a small-scale idea of communism, of how that would work, and then also on a grand scale, you know, and it's basically we're all kind of lumped into the same type of box, you know. We all have to do whatever and, and pitch in. I like the idea that everybody's got to pitch in you know, to helping build society and so forth. But I don't like the idea of some forms of old communism where it's all about, you know, you just, you're this automaton, you know, there's no respect of the being. So if you look at Christianity and different forms of Gnosticism and people in the Illuminati, like Dr. Nicholas Laos, who is the founder of the Ur Illuminati and the United Grand Lodge of Traditionalist Freemasons. So there's different Freemason branches as well. You'll find that uh, they congregate around different ideas, right? So you would see the United Grand Lodge of England, you know, and most of that Freemasonry being more liberal now than they would be as opposed in the past. So, again, you know, let me know your comments, what you guys feel. Do we live in a, you know, a socialist type of country here in the United States of America where, you know, my taxes go to take care of people. They go to people that don't work. They go to people that don't want to work, you know, and I have no choice. But of course, they're taken care of and we don't have people all over the streets right now. So that helps, you know, so I understand and I participate in this system here by, by doing that. You know, either willful, willfully or unwillfully, but I'm doing it willfully. I know what I'm doing, right? I know what's going on. I know what these exuberant taxes that I pay here in California, state and federal, what's going on. And also that it's, we're in a socialist type of system, slash fascist, slash democracy, right? A democracy is populist rule. Okay, so sometimes I look around me and I go, wow, I'm kind of not in the popular opinion. I'm not of the populace as much, I would say, probably a lot of you guys could maybe identify with me and you don't identify with as many people and that's why we find one another on the internet and through these videos these walk and talks you know so we have a tendency to not fit in with the populist ideas with the liberal modern liberalism that we see and it doesn't mean that you have to be like a, a right christian right or whatever you want to call it it just believes that you believe in traditionalism and science and real ideas and truth. You know, and maybe you do believe in Gnostic Christianity like I do. And I do like the old teachings in the Bible when I read them. So I stand up for that, but I don't condemn anybody else who thinks differently or if you don't like it, that's fine. But, you know, that's kind of my thing. And the more I find 
about Christianity and the true Christians, they were cool. But I also know there's a lot of cool people that are atheists or don't believe in that, you know, and that they should not be condemned. Or there's people that are, you know, Muslim or of the Islamic faith, and they shouldn't be condemned for their faith. You know, as long as these ideas that they have, that they're, they're pushing, aren't a danger to me or my children or our society. And that's what we're starting to see is that's exactly what's happening. And that's why I wanted to shoot this walk and talk, guys and girls, to, to talk about these ideas and to see what you were going to do if you're going to stand up or if you side with these leftist extreme ideas, you know, and, and discuss them because this is really a time in history that we're gonna have to either stand up or go along with them, you know, so I think it's time to, to say something. So let's see if I can get some more questions in here. Cool, thank you. I'm glad my mic sounds better. Thanks, Catherine. Hey, you're welcome, Cole. Yeah, people aren't going to like my ideas and I'm cool with that. Um, you know, here's the deal where I have a problem is I have a problem with people that try to control me. Like when I come out with something, you know, they want to come in and say, hey, your, your ideas are wrong, whatever. I don't go to their page and tell them that or try to control you know, what they post and so forth. So I have a tendency to battle with these guys and, you know, I would like them to be shut down and, and banned from my page. So that's what I do. And wh why would I do that? Because they're actually the ones advocating for that, <laughs> right? They're not the ones advocating for, you know, civil discourse. Let's talk about it. They're literally, you're not a Gnostic, you know, you, you believe with this, this crazy religious, religious right or whatever it might be, they're, they're mind controlled by the media. They're not Gnostic, but they think they are, you know? So that's my thing is, you know, I'm going to stand up and, you know, what I believe is traditionalism and true Gnosticism and truth. And we follow science. A Gnostic is an agnostic. A Gnostic is an atheist. They believe in God and spirituality. We seek to, to find out who God is. We seek, for example, if you grew up a Christian or maybe you walked away from the faith and you came back to it, you seek to really understand Christianity. You seek to understand the scripture, what they had written in the Bible, so you could understand more what your ancestors had read and, and believed. And you know, it's interesting, we just started reading about 500 years ago. You know, most of us, we couldn't read. You know, so we're in a Gnostic revolution for the last 500 years and it's built the world that we see now. We've been given liberty to basically go out into the world and pursue our passions, our paths, whatever that might be, because we've been given liberty, liberalism with chains, taxes, i.e. give to Caesar what is Caesar's, right? Don't ever forget that. And I think we're in the day of reckoning right now, guys. And it will be the war of ideas and they will make it sort of a, a left and a right type of thing because that's how these ages always end. I'm walking up a big hill, losing my breath. There's a lot of cars too, so I apologize uh, for the noise and sometimes my out of wind breath, but trying to talk while I think, while I walk up hills gets a little hard sometimes. But again, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. Hope you understand where I stand. I want to know where you stand. Are you a neoliberal? Are you more of a traditionalist or a Gnostic traditionalist? It doesn't mean we all believe the same thing, but we prescribe to certain traditional ideas, to certain traditional values, to certain traditional ethics, to traditional science. We don't make up things just to 
make people feel good. We don't speak just to make people feel good or change the way we talk, the way we think. We live in reality. This is what I believe is gonna be the big line in the sand that many of us are gonna have to choose whether you stand with these neoliberalistic ideas of modern modernity or you stand with Gnostic traditionalism, with true science, right? And, and what about these people that are pushing these ideas to our children through academia, through our government? What are we gonna do? Are we just gonna sit down and allow this? Allow our children to be, you know, given hormones or vaccinated? So tell me what you think in the comments, guys. This is, you know, really an important time. You know, let me know where you stand. You could be a, a neoliberal, that's fine, you know, and I stand on the other side and that's where I am and you can't force me to go on yours. And if you want to try to force me or you think I'm an idiot and you want to attack me, you're my enemy. That's what I feel. And I'm going to stand strong against you. And I'm pretty tough. <laughs> no, meant, whoa, birds scare me <laughs> right there, sorry. Meaning I, I believe that I have the mental capacity and the wisdom to pretty much debate anybody. Then I also have the physical to protect myself. Economically, I know how to make money and survive my family. You know, where most people, they have none of that. You know, they want to talk like they're all knowing and, and tough and stuff. And they want to push these ideas on the internet and I don't want them to. I don't want them to give that, have that freedom to push these ideas on my children. So I'm going to stand up. What are you going to do? Are you going to allow this to happen? So let me know again. Thank you for tuning in. This is Mo the Gnostic Warrior. I appreciate you guys. I'm going to eat some breakfast. I've been uh, intermittent fasting. I think it's yeah 11 o'clock. So I haven't ate since 8 o'clock. So 15 hours. Um, that's what I pretty much do all the time, trying to control this second brain down here. And then I had a long week working, uh, doing the, the mold remediation business. It was a hellish week. So I don't know how your week was, but I've been working hard, trying to make a living here, trying to keep up with the bourgeois, the Joneses, as they call them in the United States. And uh, it's pretty tough, but making it happen takes hard work and I think now going into this crisis this great reset you gotta push it up on the, the work it doesn't mean hustle 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 but you better be doing the opposite of what the populace is doing which is not much of anything you know or they're putting their money on Bitcoin and the stock market and we know what's gonna happen there we know what's gonna happen to real estate so make a note of that what do you guys think is gonna happen with real estate in 2021 2022 it's gonna crash take care be safe